Okay, headers. We've got headers. We've got headers. We've got sockets. <laughs> we've got stackies. We've got skinnies. Okay, so yeah, we've got a plethora of Pico headers. Basically, they're one pin wide, 20 pin long headers of, of a variety of different sizes. So you've got your Pico, your Pico W. Actually, can you go back one? That. Yeah, so you got your Pico W, and chances are you um, either got the header the one with the header like this where the headers are plugged in already and soldered or you solder them in yourself um then maybe you want to plug it into something and remove it or maybe you want to have the stack with stuff so we have a couple different options so um let me grab them because i'll show it on the overhead um okay so first up we have the standard this is actually good we have the standard uh you know female socket headers hold on let me focus a lot uh, these are their standard eight and a half millimeter high ones. You've got your standard, hold on, I've got to deep pico this. Okay, you've got your standard 8.5 millimeter long um, plug male headers. These fit in exactly, they're like exactly the same height. So you want to plug this in and you're like, I want to be able to remove this later. You, you are like me and you have to you remove this multiple times so they all got bent, but now they plug in. Here you go. So you've got a little bit of height here. You got like a 10 millimeters total height, um, basically, because you've got the eight and a half millimeters of this plus like the two millimeters of the, um, the spacer. Uh, so, you know, it's not bad. You can fit stuff inside of there if you want. Let's see, let's see, more focusy. Um, you know, you can stick a battery down there. You can stick some circuitry in there. Cool. But then you're like, no, I want, I want, slim style um so we also have the skinny headers so these are um you have to get them in a pair you get the um males uh, shorty headers and the female shorty headers so you see that the they're both much shorter i think these are five millimeters instead of eight and a half so you save like you know basically half the the height um but if you want it to be nice and skinny you solder these together and you see um they're significantly less tall so you just have to match them up you if you mix and match them you're not going to be happy because these headers are too long for these sockets um and these sockets they will work but like they don't grip as nicely as the long ones so just kind of keep them the same and then third up we've got stacking headers so um we love these from arduino you know people like to stack shields so this is for example um a, a proto bell uh that we designed and then you know you can put that on and then stack a Pico on top. So I'll show you that. So let's say you're like, okay, I want the Pico on top. I want some circuitry in the middle. And then I still want to be able to plug this into a breadboard or you want to be able to uh, grab it with a multimeter, a, a scope probe. Um, so you've got the stacking header style or you can put the stacking headers onto here. And then like, you know, you plug into a, a breadboard or another design and you can still uh, plug wires into the top. The only reason I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, putting something on top of this is um, the boot button isn't, you know, you kind of want to have access to that and you don't, if you have something covering here, you'd have to reach in and, and bump it, which is, you know, a little sad. So uh, you can choose though if you want to solder these in. But these are very common header kits that we've loved in our Arduino and, and breakout board days. And so just having these um, ready to go, all different sizes for your Pico or Pico W just means it's, as we have accessories, it'll be easier to plug and unplug them. Okay, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, our community, and more is, da, 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 you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. It's the Metro Mini V2 with Stemma QT. So much like the Feather uh, ESP32 V2, um, this orig the original board, the Metro Mini, came with an SCP2104. Uh, which was one thing and then um, that kind of got impossible to get and so we got a bunch of CP2102s which required a slight change to the circuit board layout you have to have two resistors and one of those things is like once you change a PCB at all like adding anything or changing any package you basically might as well redesign the whole thing because you have to get a new stencil you have to reprogram the pick and place so you might as well just kind of like make any changes also, things have changed there's usb-c there's stemma there's yeah. all sorts so that's why i was like you know what if you know if i'm here like once you're like oh i'm gonna throw out one thing from the fridge suddenly you're cleaning out the freezer uh so the whole thing got redone so we added a stemma qt port so you can plug and play 
um, with all of our STEM QT sensors. We upgraded it from a micro USB to a USB type C. Uh, so you have a reversible cable and also I like the, these nice um, yeah, the big plugs and all that good stuff. It's the same physical size, same pinout, same connections, same mounting holes. Um, but really the big change is um, changing to USB-C. The LEDs got smaller to make room. Um, and then adding that STEM IQT port at the end. But I think, you know, it was, these are big enough changes and I think there's some people who may, yeah. you know, they're like, I designed a case for the micro USB port. So they um, wanted to stick with the old version. But I thought on the overhead, I would show both really fast. So I've got, uh, this is the new one. And then uh, this is the original. So you see it's the same size. You can see it's like some parts moved yeah. around just a little bit to make some space. You know, I basically shoved everything over to the left a teeny bit to make room for this uh, STEM IQT port. Um, but also whenever I write drivers, I, I, I'm always testing it with the Metro Mini. So this is, I kind of designed this for yeah. myself. <clears throat> um, and then on the bottom, just like the V1, in fact, this V1 is changed. Um, there's a little jumper that lets you change it from five volt IO to three volt IO. And this is actually important to note because there's a little warning here. Um, the, the, at Mega 328 here is running at five volts normally. And so this port is five volt power and five volt logic, which will work great with all of our STEM QT boards because they all have regulators on them. It's a three volt regulator and level shifters. And this one, um, this one doesn't because this is a three or five volt device, but all of our STEM QT boards are five volt or three volt friendly. Cause we expect that you'll plug them in to three volt devices, like a cutie pie or uh, you know, Raspberry Pi, or you might plug them into an Arduino Uno or an Amega 328 running at five volts. If you want to use this with other boards that have a JSDSH connector, but are like quick compatible, that's a three volt power and logic, you'll want to change this from five volts, cut the jumper and solder it to make it three volt compatible. That way you get three volt power and three volt logic. Um, but by default, it's going to be five volts. So just, that's the only thing you have to watch out for, but it's not a big deal. If you want to connect to three volt logic stuff, um, just cut and solder the jumper. Like I did here, it takes you one second. And then now you're running at three volts power and logic. Uh, everything is basically the same, except, uh, just a lower voltage. Technically it's overclocking a little bit, but really don't tell anybody it works fine. Okay. And that's new products. Yay. <laughs> new, 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 new